Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew teaches from the life-changing Word of God. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm into my 10th week of teaching through the book of Proverbs, verse by verse. I know that this has been a long series, and we've been breaking it into two-week segments so that people wouldn't get tired of it, but I just am so uh, committed to getting these truths out. The book of Proverbs clearly states that this is to give wisdom to us, to keep us from falling prey to the deception of the devil and all of these things. And the reason that we see our society and individual lives going the way that they're going is because people haven't heeded the truths in the book of Proverbs. So even though it's a very lengthy series going verse by verse through this, I think it is very beneficial. And so I've just been taking the time to do it. We're now into Proverbs chapter 22, verse 22. And I'm going to read verses 22 and 23 together for about, I forget, uh, nearly, I'd say 15 chapters. The Proverbs have been ba basically just one verse is a separate proverb disconnected from the ones around it. But these verses go together. In Proverbs 22, 22, it says, Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. Well, this is powerful. You know, robbing the poor. Why would a person rob the poor? What does a poor person have to steal? Well, every person has something. And the poor are an easy target. You know, the rich people, they have alarms and security gates and, and all kinds of things as defenses, but the poor are basically defenseless. The same thing is true about oppress the afflicted in the gate. The gate here is, in those days, the gate of the city is where the elders of the city sat and they gave judgment when there was a contention between people. So this is basically, this would be like, uh, don't uh, oppress the people that are in court, you know, that can't afford a lawyer and can't um, defend themselves. Don't take advantage of them in these situations. And the reason you don't rob from the poor who is basically defenseless or the person who's in litigation and can't defend himself and is going to be taken advantage of, the reason you don't do that, even though they may be an easy target, the reason you don't do it is because the Lord will defend them and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. So this is a warning to all of the people who want to take advantage of people who can't really defend themselves. This is a warning that God is going to avenge and set all of those wrongs right. Boy, would to God that people knew this. Most people, again, they do not have an eternal perspective. They don't really believe that there is a day of accountability when we will stand before God. They don't have any fear of God. I think it's Psalms 36, 1 that says, The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. The reason people are crooked and taking advantage of people in court, the reason that they are oppressing the poor and taking from them and doing the things that they're doing is because they don't have a fear of God. They don't think that they're ever going to be held accountable for these things. But these two Proverbs right here, you put these verses together, God is going to please their, plead their cause. And if you spoil somebody else, your soul is going to be spoiled. Man, that's a stern warning right there. In verse 24, it says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Boy, this is a powerful truth. And again, people ignore this. You know, people run with the wrong crowd. And there's many scriptures that talk about that if you hang out with fools, you're going to be fool. But if you hang out with the wise, you're going to be a wise person. I believe that outside of our personal relationship with the Lord and maybe the person you choose to be your mate and things like this, beyond those two decisions, one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your life are the friends that you let into your life. Now, again, you can be friendly to everyone and you can show love to everyone, but the people that you invite into your life and that you become, you know, soulmates with them or whatever term you want to use and you establish this rapport to where they can pour into you, 
If you choose poorly in that area, that is one of the most detrimental things that you can possibly do. In the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Come out from among them, and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The verse is right in front of that. Don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. What concord hath Christ with Belial, or light with darkness, and on and on. We have to be careful, the people that we associate with, in verse 25, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. I don't think that most Christians today really understand how bad this is. We have been raised in the world system. Even those of us who were raised in church were raised in a religious system that is not truly accurate according to Scripture. There's very few people that have had a good scriptural foundation. Most of us have been influenced by religion and we've learned things wrong. And if we hang out with people that have those mindsets, well, then we are going to be just like them and it'll be a snare to our soul. We need to be careful who we hang out with. You know, I've got some friends that are just movers and shakers, and I mean doing important things. And when I get around them, it tends to bring me up to their level. You tend to become like the people that you associate with. And so this is what this is saying, that you don't need to make friendship with an angry man and a furious man. You shall not go with them or you're going to learn their ways and it's going to be a snare to your soul. This is a truth from God that applies to us today. And there's people watching this program right now that you have friends that are angry and furious and you still stay friends with them. Again, you can reach out to them. You can love them from a distance, but that does not need to be your inner circle of friends. And I know many of you think, well, I, I just couldn't do that. Well, that wouldn't be Christ-like. Jesus didn't have these people that were just bad people that were his close friends. He reached out. He forgave people. But I guarantee you, he, the people that were around him, he trained them. He was influencing them. They were not influencing him. In verse 26, it says, Be not thou one of them that strike hands are of them that are surety for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? And again, these two verses go together. And what this is saying is the same thing that was said in Proverbs chapter 6, where it says, Deliver yourself as an animal that's caught in a trap if you have become surety for a stranger or for someone else. It's saying that this is not wise to do because if you guarantee somebody else's loan and they default on it, they're going to come after you. And if you don't have anything to pay, they're going to wind up repossessing your bed is what this talks about. They could repossess your car. They could put a lien on your house. In other words, it's just going to cost you. It's not wisdom to guarantee somebody else's debt. Man, and this is done all of the time. There are parents that guarantee children's debt, which I'm not saying you can't do it. Paul talked about to, uh, when he was writing to Philemon, he says, if Onesimus has wronged you anything or if he owes you anything, put that on my account. I will repay. In a sense, he became surety for Onesimus. But that was something that wasn't advised. I guess it can be done, but you better be sure that you know that this person is worth it if you do that or they're going to come after you. In Proverbs 22, 28, it says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Did you know that this was an important thing in the Old Testament? And again, especially in the United States, some other places like this program is seen all around the world. There's people in India and Africa and Europe and all of these places that they have much more connection with their past than people in the United States do. But in the United States, you know, we just don't, we don't remember history very well. Most people, I would say among the friends that I have, most people, it would be rare for them to have a close relationship with a grandparent. And a great grandparent, just basically, they don't even know what's going on. It's not that way in most places. I was over in England and I went out to eat with a pastor and we went to his house and he was showing me that in this spot, in 1400 and something, this happened and this, I was just blown away because man, I, I couldn't tell you 
uh, very much about all of my history, but he went back to the 1400s. His family had lived in that same house. That's a connection with the past that I just don't relate to. But this is saying that not to remove the ancient landmark. Deuteronomy 19, 14, 27, 17, Proverbs 23, 10, on and on and on you could go with different places. It was a command not to remove a landmark. And the logic behind all of this is that we need to remember what has gone on before us. You know, I forgot who it was that said it, but there's a quotation that if you don't know history, you're bound to repeat it. And we learn things through history. You know, if you would go back and again, I'm more familiar with American history than I am in lots of places, but in the 1800s during the Civil War, and you look at some of the things that were done, like in the 1850s, the Supreme Court of the United States in a case that was brought before the Supreme Court where a slave was suing uh, his master for freedom because based on the Constitution of the United States. The Supreme Court ruled that that slave had no right, that slaves weren't people, they were property, and that they had no rights as individuals. Did you know that that was wrong? It was wrong back in that Dred Scott case of the 1850s, and it's wrong today, some of the uh, judgments that the Supreme Court has given. And did you know that, that Abraham Lincoln ignored the Supreme Court, uh, issued the Emancipation Proclamation, fought a war to guarantee it and to secure those rights, and they overcame what the Supreme Court did. The same thing could be done today. We can learn by that. We need to have these benchmarks, these landmarks, and remember things so that we don't just go through and make the same mistakes that were made before in history. So this is really important. And you know, on a personal level, you ought to have some, some landmarks. You ought to have some things. Like I've got a place where a rock rolled over my hand and my arm and my head. And I mean, this was a huge rock. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. It was that big. It was like this. And you know what? I put a little sign there that says, God saved my life when this rock rolled over my hand, arm, and head. And then I put down Psalms 116, 6, the Lord preserves the simple. And I've got that rock there with that little landmark. And it reminds me. And it, remem it helps me to remember the goodness of God. And I've got a number of things that I've done like this. When I go back to Arlington, Texas, I walk around and look at the place that I grew up. Look at the place where I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I go and see where I cast my first demon out of a person. I remember these places. And you know what? It, it always impacts me in a special way. We need to be remembering things like this. In verse 29, it says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before a mean man. This is just describing diligence as something that is going to bring promotion and prosperity. And you contrast this with all of the laziness that was spoken against in the book of Proverbs, and it shows you that if you work hard and do it over a prolonged period of time, spend less money than you make, you are going to prosper. That is really, really simple. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And really, there's about seven or eight verses here that kind of go together, but I'm going to take each one independently. But this is saying that when you go to eat with a ruler, or it goes on to say in these next few verses with a rich man, that you need to be careful that you not be swayed by the dainties that this person... In other words, it's like you will lust for what they have and you will tend to want to compromise and say whatever it takes to gain their favor and their advantage so that you could have these same things. And so this is warning against this. There are also some great statements here about gluttony and how we should deal with it. And you know, these exact verses right here, God spoke to me. I forget the exact uh, period of time on this, but I know it's been at least seven years. It could be as much as 10 years ago. I was about at least 25 or 30 pounds heavier than I am now, and I was concerned about it, and I'd been trying to deal with it, and I just wasn't winning. It was not working well. And I went out to eat with a couple. I was ministering at their church, and the woman was sitting there eating a uh, uh, chicken fried steak with gravy and french fries. I was eating a salad, and yet this woman was thin, 
and I was overweight. And as we talked, it turned out she had lost over 60 pounds. And here she was eating uh, chicken fried steak with gravy and french fries. And I thought, how did you do this? And this woman gave me a tape set. And anyway, it was nine hours worth of teaching. And right after I was with them, I went and visited my mother. And then I had a nine hour drive from my mother's house to my house. There was nine teachings in this set. And I just determined I was going to find out what this woman knew and that I was going to learn how to control my weight. So anyway, I prayed and I said, God, I just need some help. So I'm missing something somewhere. And I said, speak to me and show me what my problem is. And I prayed and then I put in that first CD and I mean within 45 seconds, I had my answer. This woman started talking about how that weight is not really the problem. Weight is just a symptom. It's other things. It's spiritual. It's emotional. With her, it was that she ate when she got depressed and discouraged and it was an escape. That wasn't my problem. And, but the Lord just spoke to me as she was saying that and said, the problem with you is you're just a glutton. You love food. And you know what? Most people wouldn't define themselves as a glutton, but a glutton is just a person that eats more food than your body needs. And if you're overweight, you ate more food than your body needed. That's it. And you can sit there and say, well, it's a type of food and I need to exercise. And all of those things can influence and it be a factor. But the Lord just spoke to me and said I was a glutton. And what I decided to do is just start cutting everything I did in half. I still ate desserts. I still ate candy. I did anything that I'd ever done. But instead of eating as much as I wanted or something, I would take a meal and cut it in half and just leave the rest of it on the plate. And did you know I've lost 25 or 30 pounds, kept it off for 10 years. I still need uh, to lose some, but I'm saying that I saw a dramatic instance. And all of that came from these verses. We're going to be talking about this. I'm telling you, people are spending billions of dollars on weight loss plans and everything else. If you would go to the Word of God and let the Word of God speak to you and apply it to your personal life, it will change every area of your life. It'll deal with your weight. It'll deal with your relationships. It'll deal with anything. So this is saying that when you sit with a, eat with a ruler, you better consider diligently what is before you, and look at the first two, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. You know what? This isn't saying that food is bad, but excess and loving it is bad. And specifically, the point that's being made, this isn't actually talking about your weight, but this is talking about that that ruler or this rich man can use his dainties and his delicacies to bribe you, to suck you into doing something that is against what you know God has called you to do. And if you are a person that is given to appetite, if you're a person that's going to be influenced and moved by food, you, it would be better to put a knife to your throat than to let this man tempt you and deceive you and draw you into error through food. Now again, this can have a multiple or a duplicate application. If you are a person who's just, you know, a glutton, like the Lord spoke to me, and you just love food, and if you're overweight, I can guarantee you, you don't get overweight any other way except to eat more food than your body needs and to do it often. Now, anybody can mess up. I, there's times that I'll go out, and it, especially if I don't eat a little bit, I'll get really hungry, and then I'll overeat, and man, I'm just, you know, so full that it's uncomfortable. But you can't get fat doing that one time. You might gain a pound or two if you overate, but you could eat until you passed out. And I guarantee you, you would not be fat. You wouldn't be obese if you don't do it over and over and over again. You can't get fat off of just one meal. So a person who is fat and overweight, it's because you eat more than your body needs more often than you need it. That's it. And you can go on all the diets you want to, or you could just get to where you start lessen the, lessening the, pow, the amount of food that you eat, and it'll work. And this verse is one maybe you ought to put on your refrigerator. Put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given appetite. Of course, this isn't advocating slitting your throat. This is just saying that you ought to be that committed. If you don't want a knife to your throat, well, then don't get to where you're a glutton. Don't eat more than your body needs. 
In verse 3, Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Well, the word desirous here is talking about lust. That's the way it was translated in Numbers chapter 11, verse 34. So this is talking about lust. Did you know most of the time when we use the term lust, we're talking about some kind of illicit or ungodly sexual desire. But lust here is being applied to food. There are people that lust for food. And again, if we're overweight, the only way you get there is because you eat more food than you need more often than you need it. And it's lust. And we need to recognize that. And we don't need to lust for these things. His dainties and his deceitful meat. You know, again, this tape set or CD set that I was listening to, this woman said that the reason she was overweight was because she used food as an escape. It comforted her when she was depressed or discouraged and stuff. And that's deceitful me to think that you should find contentment and satisfaction and joy in food. Food is just like fuel. It shouldn't be that big of a deal in people's lives. If you are a person that revolves your day around, you know, you get up and think about what you're going to eat for breakfast and lunch and supper and you, you revolve your whole day around it. Something's wrong. You're operating in lust. One of the ways you can break that lust is to go on a fast. And you know what? If you would fast, the purpose of a fast is to break this lust. And your physical desire for food is probably one of your easiest sense knowledges to aggravate. You go without food for very long, and I guarantee you, your body goes to screaming at you. And some people say, well, yeah, and that, therefore I'm not doing any good on this fast. No, that's when it's doing good. It's fleshing it's flushing your flesh to the surface. It's letting you show how much you are controlled and dominated by food. And you know, you can break that. And it's my experience, it may vary from person to person, but with me, if I haven't fasted in a long time, you go two or three days without food, and you basically get to a place to where your hunger is subsided, and it, you aren't really hungry after that. It, you have to go a long time then to start really getting hungry. If I have been fasting on a regular basis, usually within just a day, one, skipping one meal or two meals, and I pretty much destroy and bring my hunger back under control. And so you need to break this and recognize that this is just deceitful meat is what this is saying. And uh, we're out of time. Man, there are some awesome, awesome things to say right here. Let me once again just go back to the fact that we do have all of my footnotes on the book of Proverbs in this written copy. And then we also have it on a uh, flash drive. We also have CDs and DVDs that were taken from our television program. And I believe that they'd be a real blessing to you. So listen to our announcer. He's gonna give you some information about all of this product. And then please call or write today. We trust your growing in wisdom as you study along with Andrew through the book of Proverbs. You can get the entire series that covers all 31 chapters of Proverbs in a CD or DVD album for a gift of any amount when you contact us. If you'd like to enhance your study, make sure to get a copy of Andrew's brand new hardcover book on Proverbs that includes all of his personal study notes and commentary on hundreds of verses. This book is available for a gift of any amount. If you'd like to receive all of Andrew's available resources on Proverbs, make sure to order the Proverbs package. This package includes the entire Proverbs teaching in both CD and DVD albums, the brand new hardcover book, and the Proverbs software on a USB drive for your Windows computer. This special USB drive contains the Proverbs portion from the Living Commentary with all of Andrew's personal study notes on the entire book of Proverbs in digital form. You can get this valuable package for just $199. Contact us to order the Proverbs package today. The 12th audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this 12th CD free of charge. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. 
If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember, you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events. In the month of August, he'll be in Christiansen, Norway, back in Woodland Park for the Healing Is Here conference and in Chicago, Illinois. In September, he'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina, in Johnson City, Tennessee, and in Colorado Springs, Colorado. In October, he'll again be in Woodland Park for the annual Andrew Womack Ministers Conference in West Bromwich in the UK and in Kampala, Uganda. And in November, Andrew will be at the Sanctuary in Woodland Park to host the brand new musical titled David and also for the dedication of the new Andrew Womack Ministries Auditorium with special guest Jesse Duplantis and Kenneth Copeland. Also in November, Andrew will be in Granville, Michigan. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I'd like to encourage you to check out this month's Inside Story on our website. I interview a beautiful couple from uh, England. They're actually Brits, but they heard me in Spain and the testimony of how God moved in their life and brought them to the States and what God has done in their life and the way that they are now hearing directly from God without having to go through someone else is something that will really speak to you. So check it out, the Inside Story on awmi.net. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. That's gospeltruth.tv. It's an internet-based television network, and you are not only gonna get my teaching, but you are also gonna hear instructors from Karis Bible College. You've got well-known people on there like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore. These are all people that are friends of mine. We have differences and variances, but we're all preaching the same thing and it's a safe place to be. You are gonna be blessed. So check it out, it's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv.